In the previous module, we introduced DNA and genes. We saw there can be multiple variants of a gene and that this variation is heritable. We also saw that genes do reproduce. Because these three conditions are met, genes evolve. However, genes are only one of multiple nested levels of organization in living systems. Conventionally, genes are considered the most basic unit of inheritance. For the purpose of understanding evolutionary processes in living systems, we will consider them also the most basic level of organization. Genes are located somewhere on very long strands of DNA, which, in the organisms we see around us, are coiled up into structures called chromosomes. Each chromosome has a specific fixed set of genes on it and consequently a specific size. As you can see, the chromosome often carries an extra copy of itself around. These two copies are joined more or less in the middle, giving the chromosome the rough appearance of a capital letter X, at least under certain conditions. To uniquely identify the 23 distinct chromosomes in humans, we sort and number them by decreasing size. Of each distinct chromosome we have a pair, one from our mother and one from our father. So we have in total 23 times 2 is 46 chromosomes. To have this set of pairs of chromosomes is referred to as diploid. To have only one of each chromosome is referred to as haploid. Among this set of chromosomes is also a pair of sex chromosomes, which is not identified by a number, but usually with letters. In many species, the letters that are used are X and Y. If you have an X and a Y, you are biologically male. If you have two Xs, you are biologically female. The total set of genes across all chromosomes is called the genome. Chromosomes are packed inside living cells in a structure called the nucleus. Cells contain many other structures that perform different functions, a bit like the different organs in our bodies. We call these different structures in the cell organelles. Some organelles have their own DNA with their own set of genes. For example, many organisms have in their cells organelles called mitochondria. These are the energy factories of the cell, and they have their own DNA whose set of genes is referred to as the mitochondrial genome. Plants also have another organelle with DNA in it, the chloroplast, which performs photosynthesis and which has a chloroplast genome. Diploid organisms, like us, with a pair of each chromosome, reproduce sexually by making haploid reproductive cells. In general, new cells in our bodies are made by splitting an existing cell and distributing copies of the chromosomes over the two resulting daughter cells. Reproductive cells are also made by splitting existing cells, but this normal cell division is preceded by a step that involves the more or less random segregation of each pair of chromosomes, which are then distributed over daughter cells, which subsequently divide one more time. In other words, one diploid cell randomly distributes one of each pair of chromosomes over two new cells, which then split again to result in four reproductive cells. These reproductive cells are called sperm in males and eggs in females. When a sperm and an egg cell fuse, a diploid cell with a novel combination of chromosomes results. Individuals, such as us, have organs which consist of tissues made up of cells. Individuals interact with one another in populations or other groups. In this module, we're going to look at the extent to which these level of organizations, gene, chromosome, genome, cell, individual and group are subject to evolutionary change. If the three conditions of variation, heritability and competition are met, this should be the case. But does that also mean that evolutionary change at any one level is good for the other levels or could conflicts arise? And how would those be resolved? We will look at this in the next video.